I decided to do another instructional video. Because I like it. I decided I'm going to run through the eight basic stances. Because I have videos previously with the eight stances. I was looking at it recently and there's some problems. Not with my teaching, but with the videos. And so, deleting them. And I don't want to delete them unless I've got something to replace them. So I'm going to go through all these stances real quick and uh, you'll get a chance to, to really uh, know uh, what the stances are. I'm going to do more than just the stances. I'm going to do the four primary ways to move in each stance, except of course slow stance and hanging stance. So the first basic stance is horse stance. Sometimes we do the first stance as cat stance. I'm not going to talk about why today. We'll get to that another day. But horse stance, you want to have your feet pointing the same direction as your nose, your heart exactly perpendicular to the line between your knees. Um, if you're on a line like I am here, either your toes or your heels should line up on the line. Your knees should be bent. Some schools like to have you way down low like this. I say just go to where it's comfortable. Um, if you go so low that your knees start to hurt, then that can actually damage your knees. If you start really young, you can get low like this and stay like that all the time. Um, for me, comfortable is about here. Some people, even if they start young, they never really do get low, just because you know everybody's muscles are a little different. Um, so horse stance, your feet point the same direction as your nose, your heart points out this way, knees are bent, weight is equally distributed between your two legs. Mostly you're going to be attacking either this direction if you're standing still, or these directions if you're moving. The next stance is bow stance. This stance, your front leg is bent, your back leg is straight. I do it at the side, like this. Um, if you have a line, your feet will be on either side of the line. Um, if you're on a, on a basketball court like I am, this is a good way to test if your stance is good. So you'll have feet on either side of the line. Your front toe will be pointing the direction you're going, the same direction as the line you're on. Your back foot back. It'll be at a slight, you know, 45 degree angle, but if your knee will be straight, so that if you get a push from the front, you can absorb all that into that leg. It'll go all the way down to the heel if you're set up right. Um, the next stance is back stance. This one, all your weight is back on your back leg. Oh, that's the other thing. On the bow stance, all your weight should be forward. Your back leg should have so little weight on it that you can almost lift it without shifting. Almost. Almost is a big word, but almost. Right, next stance is back stance. All the weight's on the back leg. Knee bent until it's you know just starting to be uncomfortable. Your toe is up, your heel is down. You should be able to lift that leg off the ground without shifting your weight. In some, some styles they call this a back empty stance, and they call the cat stance the forward empty stance. Um, so we'll go right into the cat stance. Same thing, back leg bent, all your weight on your back leg, this time it's your toe that's touching instead of your, your heel. And what the idea is, conceptually, when you're doing the back stance, you start in a, cat, in a bow stance or a horse stance and you back up. So your toe comes up so that you're not. Whereas with the cat stance, you start out in your bow stance or your horse stance and you shift forward so that all your weight comes forward as you as you shift up into your cat stance. And uh, then this is where we get our short jabs. This is where we get our really short moves as in the cat stance. Also, the other thing is back stance is used for sweeping. So your movement is actually opposite 
If you're moving forward, your movement of your body is actually opposite the movement of your foot. So you go this way, this way, as opposed to the cat stance, where your movement when you're going forward is the same as your movement with your foot. So you go this way, this way. Not a whole lot of difference when you're holding still, but if you're holding still, you're losing. Um, the next stance is medium stance. This one, you can kind of conceptually start out like you're in a horse stance, we put our heels on the lines. Um, and then you shift your toes so they're both 45 degrees, and then you shift your body so that you're facing that direction. Everything goes that way. Both your hands need to reach that direction. And that's why you shift both your, your feet. Um, 45 degrees is kind of the, the standard if you're doing it right, but it's really a medium stance. Anytime your weight is equally divided between the two, two feet, and both hands can go forward to the same spot. You know, so your back foot collects all the energy, your forward foot has some weight on it too, and your hands can go forward. That's a medium stance. Um, correct if we're doing a correction, is 45 degrees, both knees bent, weight evenly divided, body facing that direction. The next stance is dragon stance. I'm going to teach you a couple different ways to get into the dragon stance. Uh, one, you can start out in the first stance, facing the opposite direction, one second, one and eleven. Turn one foot all the way around, bring the other knee as close to that heel as you can, and then you're in dragon stance. Um, dragon stance again, you go both directions this way if you're moving, this way if you're holding still a lot of times. Um, dragon stance is kind of a weird one. Oh, the other way to get into dragon stance is if you step across and then bring your heel close to your, your or your knee close to your heel. Um, so dragon stance, you know, horse stance is the stance from which all stances are derived. Dragon stance is kind of the stance that all stances funnel into. So, if you're, if you're doing a good, strong forward movement, you can do bow stance, or just as easily slip the other foot, other hand going forward into a dragon stance. You know, so whatever you want to do. If you're here, your opponent's there, you want to hit him, he's about to step out, you go, boom! You think you might be expecting that. So instead, you're here, you step out, boom! So, that's kind of that, you know. Um, and then, like the, uh, the horse stance, you can continue to attack, keep going. Or, you can cycle right up in front of somebody and boom, 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 boom. Um, so that's, that's dragon stance. Um, next is low stance. Low stance, we do all of our stretches in. We also do our sweeps in. I'm not going to talk about sweeps today. But I'm going to show you the low stance, which is where all the sweeps come in. Um, you want to go all the way down. Some, some styles call it a reverse bow stance. And um, there are times when it's just easier to go into a bow stance and turn your body face the opposite direction. Your foot will be kind of a 90 degree instead of a 45 degree. But for our stretches, for our forms, for any time that we're doing it for fun. Um, and a lot of the times we're actually going to use it in a fight. You want to go all the way down. Um, if you can get this heel to the ground, that's great. If you can't, that's fine. This is the one stance where I don't care if you are flat on the ground or not with both feet. Um, that foot should be flat on the ground, but this foot maybe not. If you need, need to, sometimes you'll have this foot up like four sweeps. Um, and then hanging stance. Like the name implies, is anytime you've got a foot hanging. So when you've got a foot up, um, we call it hanging stance anytime we go into a kick. So if you come up, kick. It's a hanging stance. And so that's why, for practice at least, 
Um, when we're doing our forearms and whatnot, we like to bring our foot to our knee, kick back to our knee, and then back. And then, you know, same for any other snap and kick. And kick back out. Um, you know, turn kick. And kick back out. Um, you know, you want to bring that back there. Part of it is just, you know, thinking wise, you want to think about coming up to a stance, which in this case is hanging stance, and then doing your kick, and then back to the hanging stance, and then you're ready to go again. Um, of course, sometimes in, in a real fight, it's nice to be able to go toe kick, turn kick, without coming back to it, you know, because that's really fast. Um, some people in other arts like to bring their foot up and then straight out. Um, just different ways of looking at it. Different ways of uh, attacking the training. You know, this is one of those times where when you get to sparring, your own muscles, your own body are going to kind of uh, take over. You know, you're going to get in there. You know, some people they love those vertical punches because those vertical punches you can go. <laughs> Other people are more like a bulldozer. And they come in, and even if that fast vertical punch is really slow. So for them, they may as well always do that reverse punch, which gives you just a little bit of an edge on strength. Um, so then I said I was going to talk about how to move it up. Well, there's four most basic kinds of movement uh, for each of the stances, each of the six major stances. Um, the four primary stances are horse stance, bow stance, uh, cast stance, and medium stance. And for these four stances, it's walking, retreating, shuffle step, and shuffle back. Um, the uh, dragon stance, back stance, hanging stance, and low stance are your secondary stances. Those are the stances you don't want to stay in for a long time. And so they've got different movements um, for the, for the uh, back stance. It's a sweep step and uh, um, a shuffle sweep and uh, retreating and shuffle back. Um, for uh, dragon stance, it's a cross step. walking and uh, cross back and uh, retreating. So they're, you know, they've all got some still in common. Um, for low stance and hanging stance, all your movements are your kicks and your sweeps. So it's kind of that. Um, walking. In the most basic sense, walking is just foot over foot going forward. If you get really good as a martial artist, you'll start to get to the point where you can walk down the street and pick out people that are martial artists or dancers or you know, whatever, um, military, uh, band, you know, marching band people a lot of times. Because these will be the people where all your weight is on one foot all the time when you walk forward, take steps back, you turn, your foot will stay mostly flat as you turn. Um, these are just things that you kind of pick up. You know, um, I was watching a lecture one time. I was really bored because I knew the, uh, the subject really well. I keep walking around this. And uh, the only thing I could think is, man, I could kill that guy. I don't even have to look. So, you know, anytime you're walking, you want to keep your, your balance as you walk. Most people, when they walk, they lean forward and they kind of fall forward as they walk. And that's a really lousy way to walk, you know, and when you're doing backwards, you're doing this too. Uh, it's a really lousy way to walk for being a martial artist, being somebody who fights. You just want to be able to move forward, um, stand up confidently, you'll, you'll see your surroundings.
surroundings better for one thing, and at any point in the step, you're ready. You know, I can go from here to a dragon stance. Easy. I can go from this point all the way forward to a bow stance. You know, that's kind of a crooked bow stance, but it's still a bow stance. Um, so, you know, anytime you want to walk, anytime you're walking, even down the street, you want to be, you know, confident and standing up and uh, some people call walking with purpose. Um, one of the disadvantages is fewer people are going to stop you on the street just to say hi, because they're always going to think you're going somewhere. Even when you're just kind of wandering, you go, uh, you know, because he's busy, you know, because you're moving.
Uh, in Tai Chi, uh, you know, you do a movement, pull back, and you do a movement. And you pull back. Well, we're not doing Tai Chi, we're doing Kung Fu. But more the same than different. More, more same than different. So you're forward, pull. Pull back, shift out, pull. And if you're doing a movement, you will punch or something at the same time. You want to all land boom, together. And once, once, as your weight is forward, that's where your fist lands. Pull back, out, boom. Pull back, out, boom. Next we want to talk about horse stance. Um, this one you can kind of do on three counts. Start out, and with horse stance you move um, along this line. Now where your shoulders are, which is kind of counterintuitive to the other major stances. You know, with cat stance and medium stance and bow stance, you move in line with your heart. Whereas in horse stance, you move in line with your shoulders. And uh, I'd love to give you a long, detailed history of why that is. The real reason is mostly because leverage, you rotate. Um, but it also makes it a lot slower. So start out this way. Your first movement, on the count of one, pull back, almost like you're in a back stance. Let that foot fall so it's pointing in the direction you're going. Two, you step forward like you're in a cat stance, so it's going to be a long cat stance. It's going to end up in a horse stance. Three, you shift so that you're back in your horse stance. So one, two, three. One, two, three. And if you're going to do a, a movement, a punch, or whatever, when you do that, then you do it on three. So one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So that's a movement in the major stances. Um, a sweep step in back stance. Like I said earlier, when you do your stepping in back stance, your, your body's moving in the opposite direction as your your, your foot. So your foot comes forward and swings this way, your shoulders swing this way. This way, if you're doing a punch, you step up behind them, punch. Step up behind them, punch. Punch. Uh, and I know I said that you can do all your sweeps in the low stance before, it's not entirely true. You can also do some sweeps and back stance and some sweeps and horse stance. So, gotta catch a little tricky there. Um, but, you know, and this answers for your uh, back stance version of walking. And then, we go on to the dragon stance. The dragon stance actually has a walking version. Again, just like horse stance, you move in line with your shoulders as opposed to your heart. Step out. Turn. Step out. Turn. Step out. Turn. The funny thing is, um, when you're doing them fast, you know, fighting speed, there's two stances that are lunges. The first is your bow stance, and that just makes sense if you're lunging, 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 lunging. The other one is dragon stance. And when you do it slow, it, it doesn't feel like you're lunging. It feels like you're almost doing Tai Chi. But when you're doing it at full speed, at fighting speed, it's boom, 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 boom. You can see all my weight's going forward. I'm lunging. You can get all your weight into whatever movement you're doing. Um, so that's that. A shuffle step. Um, a shuffle step is when you don't step all the way. You keep the same foot forward and you bring your back foot up and you put your foot out.
this, um, if you're starting, or if you feel like you're really angry and you got to work something out even when you're advanced, something called a stomp step. There's nothing wrong with stomping if you don't mind the damage to your floors. These aren't my floors. Then we'll move on to uh, medium stance. This one, you know, I like to do my uh, cross arm when I do my shuffle step on my medium stance. If you want to throw that block in when you're doing your uh, shuffle step, which of course brings us to cat stance. Sometimes, when you're fighting, you're winning. Yay, winning! And the guy is falling all over himself, trying to get away from you. And you're going forward. And then he regains his footing. And if you go backwards, if you're all wrong, you can end up tripping over yourself. And that's why we try to practice going backwards. Um, the easiest one for these is cat stance again. Start out here, pull your foot back, and just shift. Go back, shift. You don't cover a lot of ground, you get back. And this can be a great way, you know, if they come in with a big move and you're just not ready for it, you can recover for some time, wait a lot of passes, and then go forward. 
that's really what your back stand or your cast stance retreat is going to be for. Is you just pull back for a second, capture it, capture it, and then go back forward. You just want to use it as a spring. Um, if you end up actually retreating in cat stance, not able to gain your footing to uh, get into a better stance, you can fall apart in a hurry. Um, uh, the next one is bow stance. This is actually pretty easy because you shift your weight back, and, and as you shift your weight back, turn that foot so that it's mostly forward, bring that knee so that it's bent how you're going to be when you land. And this is actually a really stable way if you're making a long-term retreat. You, know, you come here, come back into bow stance, you can cover a lot of distance in a hurry, way back. Um, you're well balanced, you're well secure, you're ready to go. Uh, for medium stance, as you, as you pull your weight off, you go back and you shift back. This is actually a really slow way to go, but it also has the advantage of landing you in a good, solid movement for either going forward or back. You don't know what you want to do next. You're here, you go back, you go back. Okay, now I'm going to go. cover about somewhere between cat stands and bow stands and distance. And somewhere between cast stance and bow stance for stability. Um, so it's kind of somewhere in between. It's a medium, what we call medium stance. Uh, horse stance. This one, this is where your sweep's coming. I'll, I'll elaborate on that in just a second. But you're in your horse stance, and you move on your shoulders. You pull back, so you're almost like in a cat stance. Push that foot all the way back, so you're here in a dragon stance. Shift, pull back, pull back, shift, pull back, pull back, shift. Um, you say, where does your sweeps come in with that? Well, as you're shifting, if this hand goes around, you have to sweep. Uh, so your back stance, still.
course they would sin. And again, this one can be used for a sweep. Um, so Bring this foot in, 
and then you turn around, and now you're right-handed again. So you're here, full, full. You know, so that uh, pretty much medium stands. You can do that thing, you can do that with both stands. Here, here. Um, it's actually a good idea to go through all six of the major stances um, doing that. One thing that will really work out your knees, calves, keep really good shape if you want to those stands. Um, and that brings us to change step. If you're like some people, you fight really well against right handed people, right handed, and you fight really well against left handed people, left handed. And, uh, you, you, you've all seen this on a, a baseball game. You know, you get that, that switch hitter out there. He stands up there and he, he pulls up his bat and he looks. He's going to swing right handed. If it's a left handed batter or a left handed pitcher, he's going to swing left handed if it's a right handed pitcher. The switch hitter. So if you're feeling that moment, and now is a good time. Hold that foot back, and as you go forward, you've got your chance. Boom. 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 Just do that in cat stance. You can do it in anything. Horse stance. Boom. 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 Let's do all the stances that way. And that's all the eight stances. That's how you move in the major six. Um, there's a thousand kick video on there also. Go through and learn your most basic kicks that way. And uh, um, I'm going to put together a sweeps video at some point, and you'll see how you do sweeps. Uh, so, if you have questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, email me or come into class. I'd love to see you.